consistency. For more than 16 years, Iron Mike Morocco has been in the game. Some years better than others, but in the end, Morocco has always been a player. Tonight in St. Louis, Morocco goes where no one has gone before. A historic night of Supercross racing from St. Louis, Missouri is next on ESPN2. What has Mike LaRocco meant to this sport? Well, he is an icon of the sport. I mean, the cornerstone, such a tough guy. I was talking to him today, and it's crazy to think that when he has gone racing and actually tried to make a main event, he can't remember ever missing. He's not sure if he has it in all these years, but he says he can't remember it. And a true testament to how tough Mike LaRocco is. He's coming into tonight. They're thinking he possibly has two crack ribs from a practice crash. Well, it's almost a sure bet that Mike LaRocco is going to be in Las Vegas, the official destination of Supercross, and that is our final destination. Make sure you get your tickets now as we take a look, first of all, at our THQ AMA Supercross Series standings. Chad Reed on top of the board, 241, then it's Wyndham, Villamant, and there's Mike LaRocco tucked in to fourth place. On the other side of the board, as we take a look at the THQ World Supercross GP standings, Damon Huffman out in front. Heath Boss is moving to second, and then Grant Langston. And Cameron, let's talk about the aggressive nature of this series. First of all, we started things in Phoenix, and that's when Villeman and Wyndham got together. But it has carried over in the last few weeks. Everyone's scrapping for points, and Grant Langston is the latest victim of maybe too much enthusiasm. Well, Supercross has always been an aggressive sport. Bumping and grinding are part of it. AMA is really watching it. And last week, Grant Langston getting too hot, getting into it with Jimmy Wilson. Actually coming up next to him with his motorcycle. AMA says that's too much. Gets in the face of one of the officials. And guess what? He is kicked out for the main event, effectively missing one full round. And that really hurts him in the points. And that really helps a guy like Damon Huffman and also Heath Voss. Well, there's two sides to every story. We talked to Grant Langston and Steve Whitlock. And here's what they had to say. Well, basically, I watched on video, and you just see me yelling. You could tell I was very upset at the point. Um, a lot of people didn't really know. There's a lot of rumors that I punched an official and stuff like that, which none of it was true. I didn't take a swing at anybody. I, I was heated up, and, uh, you know, I went over and voiced my opinion, and, you know, obviously they didn't agree with me. And, you know, I got DQ'd for that night, but um, that was it. There was no fines or any suspension or anything because I guess there was no re real reason for it. So, uh, you know, we, you know, I think everyone, me and the AMA spoke afterwards, and everything's fine now. But uh, I guess at the time they had to make a, a decision, and they had already just disqualified two other guys for, for fighting. So I guess they just wanted to uh, be consistent with their ruling, and you know, that's that's how it turned out. What? Grant got a bit aggressive on the floor, and when he turned his bike around and attempted to run over Jimmy Wilson. That was uh, what we consider unsportsmanlike or inappropriate action. So we disqualified him at that moment. So he was taken out of the out of the out of the racing for the rest of the night, which he probably meant he lost a chance to ride in the main event, which uh, was the punishment for the evening. He was he was just it was basically like he wasn't even at the event. So that's the word from Langston and Steve Whitlock. We'll see how that plays out today. Right now, it's time for the MX Unleashed track experience. And taking you over the finish line there is the 199 of Travis Pastrana. He is back in Supercross, checking the whoop section, setting you up for the triple. If you have a hard time with the whoops, it's going to be tough to fly 65 feet. And then the elevated corner, Travis going outside, stepping off in the tripling. You can also go to the inside. Check this section. The wheelie jump into the center of the whoops and jumping out technical way to go about it some guys will skim and then this section it gives you the option of the triple 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 check it from travis's helmet camera on the left it is super tough and if the track breaks down it will be hard for people to get through it that way there are other options there another right hand corner jumping through here he's going across the starting area basically backwards getting probably up into third gear right about there left turn then you have a triple set up right before the finish line oh rider going down 
Travis going over the bars. And he's looking around, looks like he's gonna be all right. And here comes more riders. Looks like Tyler Evans jumping in there. You never know what you're gonna get in. Well, that was one heck of a ride. Thanks, Travis Pastrana. That was your MX Unleashed track experience. Well, we're just about to set to go racing 250 as we take a look at who advances to the main two heats, four transfer, two semis, and then one LCQ. That gives us our prestigious 250 main event as we take a look at our starting grid. This is heat number one in the 250 class. Kevin Windham, David Will David Villeman's in there, Nick Way, Damon Huffman, and Travis Pastrana, the return of number 199, and Travis will be running our helmet camp tonight, Cameron. And taking a look from his view, that should be pretty exciting. This 34 is down and they're off. Check it out from Travis's view. Oh, getting pinched by Way. But he has the inside line. Let's see how he makes it work. Damon Huffman out in front. Look at Travis going to the inside. Travis Pastrana pitches off. David Billman and gets the lead. And you see Travis going for that triple. Come up a little short. Wind of going for one and coming up a little bit short. So right now, the helmet cam wow. to the front with some great moves. Smart racing by Travis Pastrana. Welcome back to Supercross 199 in the helmet cam to boot. So it's Pastrana out in front, Kevin Windham right behind him. And this should be a great race with Villeman currently sitting in third. Nick Ways in fourth as they come through for the green flag. Let's look at this one more time. I thought Travis was all but out of this. Everybody so close right there on the triple. Travis has the inside line. That's what I'm talking about, being smart. And then he comes up a little bit short there. And Villeman right in front of him as they go towards the triple. Travis has a little bit of a better run, but he does have the inside line. Takes everybody wide. It's his lead, and now everybody's got a gun for him. Back to racing action. Travis Pastrana still out in front. Number 199 on board the Suzuki. Behind him, number 14 is Kevin Windham on board the Honda. Number 12, David Villeman on board the Yamaha. We have got all the factories represented up in front. We're just missing a KTM and a Kawasaki. We'd have a complete sweep. Well, you watch in that rhythm section. We've talked about going triple, triple, triple. No one looking like they're able to do it. We've seen some triples mixed in there in different areas. We'll see if the riders use that as a passing area. Right now, Wyndham is just right all over Travis Pastrana. Travis has to find a place that he's faster. And you see Travis is back in, coming around a little bit. He's looking over to see if Wyndham's there. Wyndham had a great drive in the whoops. So Travis Pastrana out in front. Kevin Wyndham sits in second. Here comes David Villeman. And look at... Wyndham trying to get a drive on him, had a slight bubble there in the whoop section leading up to that big triple, unable to close the door, he'll go to the inside line, can he get him here? There we go, we talked about the triple, 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 will they use it? Kevin Wyndham uses it beautifully, Travis maybe just not sure of it just yet, the track is groomed before the racing, and maybe he wasn't familiar with the line after the tractors had hit it, and wanted to take a couple looks at it, but right now, Kevin Wyndham used it, and he is getting a bit of a lead on Travis, so probably the faster of the two riders, the laptop are very close. Whoa, look at the lap time. The last one for Wyndham under 50 seconds. What's happened right here? Because Travis looked like he had it. Well, it looked like he had the run for it. And it looked like he came up just a little bit short there trying to do that other option. And Wyndham just coming through smoothly. Devin yeah, Wyndham way too experienced to let that opportunity slip by as he goes over the triple here. Travis Pastrana now closing back in. So it is Wyndham and Pastrana and Villeman, one, two, and three. But remember, it's the top four advancing on. So Travis Pastrana in a very good position right now, currently running in second place behind your leader, Kevin Wyndham, number 14, on board the Honda. We're going to step aside and take a break. We come back much more 250 racing from St. Louis, Missouri. Travis Pastrana currently in second. Welcome back to St. Louis, Missouri. This is 250 heat number one, the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series. Your leader, number 14, is Kevin Windham out of Centerville, Mississippi. Behind him, number 199 on board the Suzuki. That's Travis Pastrana just coming into your view. Number 12, David Villeman on the Yamaha. And you saw there, again, Travis having a little bit of a hard time with that section, coming up just a little short. See riders sliding around. Maybe the traction is not really perfect. I can see some loose dirt in the corners. Lots of roofs flying around, so maybe the traction a factor going into that triple-triple section. Talking to Kevin Windham's mechanic, Jonathan Hyland, he said this track is perfectly suited. He said this is the kind of track Kevin Windham would build if he was doing one. He was putting down some unbelievable lines yesterday in practice, railing through the corners and riding a wheelie all the way through the whoop section. Unbelievable how well he's been riding. 
He's been riding great, and I spent some time in his rig with him this afternoon, and just so calm, cool, collected. I talked to him about the race. He says, you know what, Cameron? I really don't think about the racing until I get down there. It doesn't work for me. I, I just go out, ride, practice. I don't really care about the lap times in practice. So much hubbub made about that. I just go out when it's time to race. I'm doing the racing, and Travis Pastrana right now is trying to put on a charge to get up with Wyndham. Maybe just wants to see how he measures up, because the main event is where it really matters. Travis is in qualifying position right now but hey these guys are racers and they want to win and the white flag comes out for kevin windham this is the final lap we know windham has the talent and the ability to win it all but i'll tell you what travis pastrana this is only his second week back he raced last week in daytona here he is in st louis he says he'll probably race one more time on the supercross series and he has been doing phenomenal currently running second but here's a great battle right now remember four will advance onto the main event and Nick Way holds it down, but here comes T. Evans. Tyler Evans, number 58, trying to get that fourth spot and avoid going to a semi. Well, Tyler looking great right there. We've seen a lot of ups and downs from Tyler Evans, and he's good friends with Nick Way. I'd expect these guys to keep it real clean, but Tyler looking into this inside line, and oh, he keeps it clean, but he sweeps the line, and let's see what happens. Evans going for the triple where Way is doing the doubles. Oh, crisscrossing. So Kevin Windham will pick up the victory. Travis Pastrana will come in for second place. Villamy will get third. And look at this, Tyler Evans coming around. Nick Way's right behind him. This is the battle for the transfer to the semi. Who will go on and who will get a nice rest? And look at that, Nick Way tried to shut the door, unable to get the wheel in. And Tyler Evans will advance on. Nick Way just missing out. And that was some great racing, Cameron. Great performance by Tyler Evans. Those guys keeping it clean. and. Kevin Windham, one happy guy right now. So your official results from heat number one, Kevin Windham gets the victory, Travis Pastrana, David Villeman, Tyler Evans all advancing on, Nick Wade just missing out, he is semi-final bound. Right now, let's join the third member of our broadcast team, the lovely Jamie Little. Thanks so much, Todd. You know, Kevin Windham and Travis Pastrana, they used to hang out quite a bit, ride together all the time when they were teammates, and now he's back. What's it like being out there with him again? Well, you know, we're on different teams now, but, uh, you know, I think the sport missed him. It's good for him to be back, and uh, it kind of flashes me back into, uh, what was it, 2002 when we were at Anaheim, doing the same thing, just going at it during the heat race. So it felt really good, uh, but, you know, I'm focused on the main tonight, looking forward to uh, trying to duplicate a ride like that for 20 laps, and uh, interested to see here in this next heat how Chad's going to do. Tell us about that pass on Travis. Looks like he made a little bobble there in the rhythm section. Yeah, the first lap, I, I messed up, and then the second lap, I was able to uh, get a good drive through there. He made a little mistake and uh, went into the lead. Tried to shake him, couldn't do it. It was a great race. As we get set for 250, heat number two, there he is, Mike LaRocco. They call him Iron Mike, and for very good reason. And he's the feature of this week's Nissan Rider Profile. I remember, uh, shoot, it was back when, uh, you know, Ricky Johnson and and if ward and just Dan and you know all those guys were were the, on the top and i don't know i just remember the stadium was just bringing out a lot of nerves and i just remember thinking uh you know at the end of the day that was pretty cool to to be out there with those guys and and, and to be in a big stadium and it just uh you know i kind of kind of liked it it's a cool feeling to you know to have uh, some crowd and some you know the fans and and the noise and um but it, it's also cool to go to each track and walk the track and kind of, you know, imagine the obstacles you're going to do. And, and uh, you know, I like riding, you know, motorcycles and to, to kind of dissect everything and uh, go out there and do it. It's, uh, it's just cool. It's just something I like to do. And I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that ride motorcycles at my age. And, you know, why not to, why not still do it? I mean, I'm in no hurry to, uh, to do anything else. So I'm just going to keep on doing it and, until, uh, until it's hit, you know. <laughs> I would, at this point, I've signed for two more years, and uh, at least for that, you know, this year, next year. And then after that, I'll have to see how the summer goes. So there's your starting grid, 250, heat number two, number 22, Chad Reed on top of the board. Mike LaRocco there, once again, Michael Byrne, Heath Boss, Grant Langston, and Ryan Clark. The 30 board is up. We're going eight laps, and the top four going to the main. Five through 20 will go to semifinal number two. There's LaRocco right next to Chad Reed. That's happened a time or two, and LaRocco looks as calm as ever as the 30 board goes sideways, Cameron. 
We'll see if the injury to his ribs, Michael Walker, that is, is a factor here in this heat race and tonight. Michael Byrne gets the greatest drive, goes right to the inside line. Byrne, can he hold it? Grant Langston's there, Chad Reese in third. And it's going to be Michael Byrne and the Kawasaki. But here comes Grant Langston on his KTM number eight. And a big shout out to the Moto Triple X number 23 of Kyle Lewis. Setting in third, this is his first race back in an off-season Supercross. He had an injury, and Grant Langston moving it quickly to the front. So Grant Langston's in first, Michael Burns in second, Chad Reed is in third, and you talk about injuries, Chad Reed went down to Daytona last week, and then yesterday in first practice went down hard, talking to his people, and Darren Thornton's mechanic said he's very sore, but you know Chad Reed's going to be up when it's game time. Another guy who spent some time in the dirt is right there on your screen, the number eight. Red Bull KTM, Grant Langston having a get off today in practice, actually in the second practice, very tough on him throwing his motorcycle away, but I talked to him afterwards just a bit, he says, I'm all right, I'm gonna go for it, and right now he's looking great. So it's Langston in first, Michael Byrne in second, and here comes Chad Reed, he picks up another spot, one, two, and three, it's an international affair here at St. Louis, Missouri. Langston, your leader here in 250 heat number two, Chad Reed in second, and Michael Byrne in third. Kyle Lewis maintaining that fourth place position still. We'll have to see how Kyle's conditioning is. He hasn't been on the bike a real lot. He hasn't been back in Supercross until this very weekend. We'll see how it shapes up for him. And Chad Reed, a guy we talked about having some injuries, you see him right there, put his foot down. Every time he impacts that ground just a little bit, sends the shock waves through your body. But he's looking great right now. I'd expect to see him try to make a run on Langston. But again, the injuries are a question mark. Mike LaRocco right now currently running in eighth place as those fours both go by on the Tissot running order. The the yellow marker next to it means they are in a qualifying position. So it's Langston, Reed, Byrne, and Lewis right now in the qualifying spots. And we'll see if Reed can get onto this triple, triple, triple. You see him get the first one, second one, and the third one. So riding smooth when he got alone. He didn't do it when he was in the traffic, when he was with Byrne or Michael Byrne. And right now, Reed moving up. He's catching up to Langston. So your leader, Grant Langston, out of South Africa, on board the KTM number eight, number 22 out of Australia, on board the Yamaha. It's Chad Reed. They go one and two right now as they go through one more time as we take a look at our running order. It's Langston, Reed, Byrne, and Lewis, the top four, top four advancing to the main event. Talk about the injuries these guys have had, Cameron. They're both in a lot of pain, but they're going to go hard because the most important thing is not going to a semi. They want to make it to a main. We'll step aside, take a break from St. Louis, Missouri. There's your running order, Langston, Reed, Byrne, and Lewis. Welcome back to the Edward Jones Dome. This is the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series. 250 heat number two. Your leader, number eight, Grant Langston, on board the KTM moments ago. Chad Reed, who was closing in on him, went down, and it looked like he just washed out Cameron but we've talked about his injuries we'll look at it one more time he's up and riding well right now but you know you never know how injured he is well I think this is a situation let's take a look at it the dirt is loose in some of the corners Chad I think just grabbed the binders the front brake just a little too hard let's see comes in just kind of washes falls off the side of the motorcycle I think it's loose dirt I don't think it's fatigue or injury really but it could be you see him over jumping just a little bit there we talked about the shock waves going through your body and the injuries I think his hips also sore his people like you're saying he's sore kind of all over the place yeah Jim Perry and Darren Sorensen saying you know he's sore but he's gonna go hard Chad Reed does usually exactly what he has to do to pick up a victory so we'll keep an eye on number 22 Chad Reed as he continues to go around the track currently sitting in second place and that still is a transfer position Grant Langston right now maintaining about a six second lead but Reed is on the gas he went down but he didn't lose his spot to Michael Byrne he had that much of a lead on him but Chad Reed is that good right now let's send it down to Jamie Little it's pretty interesting Kevin Windham standing on the sidelines intensely watching this taking some mental notes on Chad Reed we don't see K-Dub out here watching too often maybe he's a little nervous about the main all right, thank you, Jamie. And Chad, uh, as he continues to go around, it's interesting to watch Kevin Windham talking to his mechanic, Jonathan Hyland. He said, you know, he's not that kind of guy where he's going to think, oh, Chad's hurt, now's my chance. He's going to continue to race. 
And Chad doing what it takes to get it going, but you talk about Wyndham, you're right. You know, he likes to run his own game, but moving up to Grant Langston, what about the adversity this guy's yeah. had to overcome? I mean, he's had some crashes. He had a little fist to cuff with Jimmy Wilson, uh, so to speak, and a blowout with one of the AMA officials getting DQ'd, thrown out for the main event, not able to go to the last chance qualifier in Atlanta. All these things hurting him, but right now maybe it's made him a little bit more focused. Yeah, I remember back of that get-off he had in Houston where he went wide off the track onto the concrete. Meanwhile, Grant Langston taking the white flag. He is out in front. This is the final lap. He's got about a 30-yard lead over Chad Reed, who is coming hard. Reed looks very good, goes to a tear-off. He's getting right behind Langston as they come through one more time. Langston's got to negotiate about a slower rider, and let's check in with Jamie one more time. Well, you guys were talking about Grant Langston. You know, he just got engaged last week. He's got a baby on the way. They found out maybe he's taking this racing thing a little more seriously. All right, so Jamie delivering not only baby news, but wedding news. Cameron, you think we're going to invite him to that one? Well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to. Yeah, one of the good guys in the sport, hang out with them a bit, and the checkers for him. Maybe you'll get invited along, Todd. That'd be nice. Grand Langston picking up the victory. Mike LaRocco coming through. And LaRocco trying to get into that main event. We talked about how he has got the streak going. We'll see if he gets into his 200 tonight. He will not get in on this one. He'll have to go to a semi-race. So LaRocco to semi-two, and hopefully he'll make that main event. So there are your official results from 250 heat number two. It's Grant Langston on board as KTM pick up the victory. Chad Reed second, Nathan Ramsey and Michael Byrne. Michael Rock will have to go to a semi to make it to the main tonight. Let's send it down to Jamie Little. Well, Grant's been waiting many weeks for this moment. Finally, Grant, you didn't get the whole shot, but tell me about Chad Reed in the pass right away. Um, you know, actually, uh, Michael Byrne got the, the whole shot, and uh, I got up the inside of him in the second turn, and. Uh, I had Chad right behind me, and then all of a sudden I didn't hear anything. I guess he slid out in one of the turns, and uh, it gave me a gap, and I was able just to ride my own race out front, and uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> How good does it feel after what you've been through the last couple of weeks? <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> everyone asks me what's been going on, and, uh, you know, I've had some crashes, uh, some bad luck and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, it's times like this that makes it all worthwhile. All right, thank you very much, Jamie. Folks, get some tickets. Join us live. You can even see Jamie Little in person. Upcoming races include Indianapolis next week. We're going to the RCA Dome. After that, it's on to Pontiac, Michigan in the Silver Dome. And then we're going back down to Texas on the 17th of April. Texas Stadium, home of the Cowboys, should be a great race. Right now, it's time for this week's Suzuki Question of the Week. I know there's a lot to it, but what is the AMA's role out here at the Supercross? Our job is, is what we call the sanctioning body, which means that we supply the rules, regulations, the safety, and the uh, officials to actually run the event. It covers everything from technical control to control after the races, to safety on the track, to uh, uh, controlling the, uh, the back markers. It, it covers everything. Once the races start happening, there's a there's a call that goes across our radio system that says, let's go back to work, which means that we're ready to clear channels, hand the event over to us. We, we, we do the start, the finish, the race, everything. We control everything that goes on on the floor. Thanks for asking the Suzuki question of the week. And thank you very much for that Suzuki question of the week. Right now, it's time to check in with our Thor qualifying results. First off, in semi number one, your winner, Sean Hamlin, followed by Nick Way and Damon Huffman. In semi number two, the big winner was Heath Voss, but Mike LaRocco, congratulations. He makes his 201st main event. Congratulations to Iron Mike. And in the LCQ, it is James Pavoni and Jason Thomas moving on to the main event here in St. Louis. Don't go away. Still to come, Kevin Windham, Grant Langston, they're both the main, mixing a little Chad Reed, and you've got a great main event from St. Louis, Missouri, straight ahead. Mighty Mississippi in St. Louis, Missouri. This is the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series from the Edward Jones Dome. Todd Harris along with Cameron Steele and Jamie Little and 50,000 of our closest friends here in St. Louis have turned out for the 250 main. Earlier tonight, the scene was, well, they just gave a lot of credit to them. Iron Mike LaRocco getting his 201st main event tonight. He was going for it. His fans, his fam, he got a bobcat and a vacation to Hawaii courtesy of Clear Channel. 
Mike LaRocco has done it all. And this is what a few of his closest friends had to say about The Rock. Bob Hanna told me a story one time about Mike LaRocco uh, when he first met him in Florida. He, he actually beat him, and uh, then about, I believe it was about 10 years later, Bob went up to Mike at Daytona, I think it was two years ago, and said, Mike, now how does it feel to have all those young kids chasing you? So Mike has done the full circle. In fact, uh, I think if he continues to race one or two more years, his son may be, he may be the only guy racing against his son. He may be the, the Richard Petty of the, uh, of this sport. At the time when he first started racing, most of the guys were retiring at 26 or 7. So I'm sure at that time we were looking at, you know, the same thing. But um, things just kept happening. Things just kept working. And we're still here 16, 17 years later. The achievement doesn't surprise me because I know Mike and have been with him for so many years and watch him work so hard every day to continue to achieve goals. and. I'm sure that this isn't the last goal that he's going to reach. So, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, he could have made 200 about two years ago, but he's had some some injuries. And so, it, it, it's remarkable that anyone makes it this far. Uh, it's, a, it's a long career, and he had to be in shape to do it, for sure. Well, there is Mike LaRocco. He made it into the 201st, Cameron. It wasn't easy, but The Rock did it. He's got some rib injuries, but he has done a great job. Congratulations to him. On board tonight, Travis Pastrana, number 199. On board the Suzuki, he'll be running the helmet camp. Great to have him in the starting lineup as we take a look at our Suzuki main event starting grid. It's Wyndham Langston, Pastrana, Chad Reed, David Billiman, Nathan Ramsey. It is a star-studded event, Cameron Steele. Isn't it always? I mean... The best of the best race Supercross right here in the United States, and these guys are ready to throw down in St. Louis. 34 is sideways. The 250 main is off. Michael Byrne with a great drive. But look at Grant Langston coming to the inside. Nathan Ramsey, number 25, goes high and outside, and he will pick up the Butterfinger hole shot. Travis Pastrana on the inside. Langston right next to him. And there's Damon Huffman, but Chad Reed slides underneath him. So Reed goes into third. And here comes Pastrana. Oh, it's oh Pastrana having problems. Goes down hard. Oh. Grant Langston goes right over the top of Travis Pastrana. And Travis looking like he was trying to find a way to work some of that rhythm section. Unable to do it, he comes up a straight case in the middle. High sides over the motorcycle, and Grant Langston had nowhere to go. And it's going to take Grant out as well. We can only wish the best for Travis Pastrana, the oh, off-injured star. Well, let's look at the whole shot of the Butterfinger replay real quick. Watch the center of your screen. A lot of guys getting a great drive, Cameron. A lot of guys getting tons of speed and going around the outside, but how it's gone every time they go to the inside and someone's there to battle for it, but this time Nate Ramsey is able to hold it from the outside and Travis is trying to see coming short, then going up and he actually goes on the inside. Doesn't look oh. like a big get off, but the problem is Grant Langston. Watch this on board. This is going to be scary. Here it is. He's going to come up short right here, get squirrely. And here's where he goes down. Now, Grant Langston has nowhere to go. Oh. Well, Travis Pastrana is standing right now. That's the good news. And we all know that Travis Pastrana has had problems with his knees, and he's been recuperating from knee problems. He doesn't have a lot of cartilage in his knees, so sometimes when he goes down or when he has a shock, it goes right in between. We're racing still, though. Yep. Nathan Ramsey still out in front, Cameron. Excuse me, but Chad Reed has now moved into second. Watch this. The triple-triple combination from 22, but Ramsey shuts him down. The 25 moves over, takes the line. Smart racing from Nate Ramsey, but you got to ask yourself, how long can he hold Chad Reed back? Reed with the fastest lap times, fastest practice times, and more wow. wins than anybody else. 
Chad Ring, we've talked about the injury he had last week in Daytona. He was injured yesterday in practice. Very sore is what his mechanic and the folks at Yamaha have to say. But Chad Reed always does what is necessary to pick up the victory. And here he is. He is hounding Nate Ramsey, your leader, number 25, on board the Honda. Reed, number 22, on board the Yamaha. Currently, your overall leader in the series. And here he comes. Reed knows he has to get the charge and get in front because Kevin Windham is not far behind in third place. And Reed making it past Ramsey and then getting the triple, triple, triple. You saw Ramsey get the one section of it, but not all of it. And here comes Windham. Also getting the section right behind Nate Ramsey. Windham able to triple through there, so Ramsey has problems on his back door, and it is in the form of number 14, Kevin Windham, who is slitting the third. Ramsey now becomes a buffer between Windham and Reed. A lot of people turning out to see this battle, and it'll be interesting. Kevin Windham completely healthy. Chad Reed banged up, and Windham just goes right by Ramsey. And the interesting thing about that, I talked to Kevin Windham, and he said, you know, like I was saying earlier, he doesn't care about practice lap time. Ramsey was the second fastest, and Kevin Windham was actually down there just a little bit, fourth place. But it looks oh. like right now he is pulling on Chad Reed quite a bit. We'll and, see. And Cameron, he did exactly, as we look at this replay one more time, watch Chad Reed. Here's his section as he goes through the whoop section. Launches, gets in the perfect position. Ramsey has nothing to do about it. So Chad Reed out in front. Kevin Windham currently sitting in second. Let's check in with Jamie Little. Travis, gnarly get off. What happened? Is it your knee again? I just, I got my leg run over. I think I broke my leg. So I, I just, I messed up through this section. It's just overexcited. I, it's so good to be back. I just <laughs> remind you why I'm always off. Always in good spirits, Trav. We're thinking about you. All right, so we send our best out to Travis Pastrana. Cameron, you hope it's not broken, but, uh, man, that's just terrible. Meanwhile, back to racing action. Kevin Windham has actually closed in just a little bit on Chad Reed. Now, watch the sections that come around one more time. In practice yesterday, Kevin Windham was wheeling through the whip section. The front tire wasn't even touching. His mechanic said he was messing with the other riders and telling them, oh, my front forks aren't working. But he was, by design, going through his back wheel because he said it just saved his feet. Well, they're going to come through right here where the finish line will be to check another lap. Let's check the times on that last lap and win them four tenths of a second faster than Chad Reed. So the battle is on from St. Louis. Kevin Windham coming in hard right behind your leader, Chad Reed. They are one and two. This is the 250 main from St. Louis, folks. And once again, Windham just lighting it up through the whoop section. Chad Reed may have the answer tonight, but if you want to watch a great finish, stay with us. Chad Reed, our leader on the 250 main, will be back to St. Louis right after this break. Welcome back to St. Louis, Missouri. Chad Reed continues to lead in the 250 main event with 13 laps to go. In second place, number 14, Kevin Windham out of Centerville, Mississippi. But Cameron and I have both noticed, and folks, maybe you at home have seen the same. Kevin Windham has something a little extra tonight, and Chad Reed does not look 100%. Well, the injuries for Chad have to be playing on him a little bit, even though they're not serious injuries, so to say. Everybody we talked to with the team, you were talking about it, says he's sore. That could be a factor here in this main event. Kevin Windham has been riding great. Again, lap times don't matter to him. He just says he wants to go out and race the main event. It looks like in some places, Kevin is pulling up, possibly in the whoops. In other places, Chad is getting a little bit of distance on him. Very tight racing right now. Well, Chad Reed is Australian. They are born tough, and Reed's showing it tonight. Here comes Wyndham. Once again, Wyndham trying to reel him into that whoop section. They are one and two, Reed in first. Wyndham in second. Ramsey is in third as we go back to fifth place, and this is Byrne and LaRocco. LaRocco, congratulations to him. His 201st main start tonight, and he's in the battle once again. And we talked about his injured ribs, and they don't seem to be a huge factor for him. Always known as a charger coming from the back of the pack. And a pass right there, getting by Michael Burner, making it stick. So, Burner, no slow rider. Michael Rocco on his game tonight. Michael Rocco suffering some rib injuries earlier in the day with a little bit of a get off during practice. Now he tries to reel in number 20. That's Damon Huffman. Huffman in a chase of his own, trying to track down that world Supercross GP title. And he's nursing a bad ankle. Folks, at this point in the season, everyone, it seems, Cameron, has some injuries or some kind of nagging problems like Chad Reed. 
They've definitely been through their trials as we get farther along into the series. And Damon Huffman, a seasoned veteran, he knows get a good start, charge it, get out in front of the other competitors, especially the guys on the World Supercross Series. And you can see he's got some problems in his rearview mirror as Mike LaRocco is making a serious charge on the Moto Triple X rider. And there he goes to the inside. Huffman sweeping back in and also a move in behind there. Looks like Hamlin and Byrne getting together. Mike LaRocco making that pass stick on Damon Huffman. So two guys who've been around the sport for a long time doing battle, both of them battling injuries. Talking with Damon Huffman in his Moto Triple X trailer just before the racing. He was on the exercise bike, said it's definitely stiff. He's got a heavy cape job on that ankle, a little ibuprofen in the system. Mike LaRocco also, we saw him grimacing on the line. He is in a lot of pain, but he's out there for the 201st main start. And what can you say about these guys? These guys truly are the soul of the sport right now. And the Rocco's lap times are, are coming in very good. Reed at a 48.9, Wyndham one, and the Rocco at a 51.5, so back just a bit out of the fray. Won't be able to make the move forward with those times, but he may be able to stay up there and maybe get to the podium. We'll see how Ramsey does, who's currently sitting in third. On a night that Mike LaRocco has been celebrated, and for good reason, he has done something that no one else has done before, joining that 200 club, and he does it with ribs. Meanwhile, number 12, David Villeman, on board the Yamaha, has moved up yet another position. So Villeman getting ahead of Hamlin and Byrne, trying to move up and get into this fray and make it back onto the podium. The Frenchman has shown flashes of brilliance early in the season. Meanwhile, number 26, Hamlin, is in there, and he Foss trying to move up. Now, he currently sits second, Cameron, in the World Supercross GP, so he wants to stay in contact with Damon Hoffman. And those two guys seemingly pulling out, you know, Grant Langston with a no-point situation in Atlanta, definitely hurting him, and Voss has been getting better and better as the season goes on. You talk about riders that have been hurt, nagging injuries. Seems like Voss has just kind of been getting into his groove as we've been into these last few rounds. He Voss sitting right behind number 26. That's Michael Byrne, boss number, two, boss number 28 on board the Yamaha. And here comes Nick Way on that Suzuki, number 27. Nick Way, a crafty rider, looking for a line while Voss is trying to concentrate on Byrne. Here comes Way. Going to the inside, Way keeping it real clean. You see him go to the inside there and slide out just a little bit. It's hard when he gets to the inside here. There's some loose dirt on the top. Riders are sliding around a bit. And you have to use the berms, and you see he Voss kind of wadding, pushing into that berm. If you're just joining us, Chad Reed continues to lead. He has opened up a two-second lead right now on Kevin Windham. We'll get back to that battle. There's Damon Huffman right now in a battle for fifth. And here comes the Cobra, David Villeman, trying to move up yet another spot. DV12. You'd like to say he is one of the best riders in all of Supercross, and I will say that. Just that sometimes he doesn't come through with all the goods. He really just needs to get on the game and just push it all the time. I know he's doing it, he's racing Supercross, right. love to watch him ride, but just needs to get that little bit more aggression, maybe. He gets the pass done on Huffman, and with that, we check in with Jamie Little. Guys, it seems that David Billman has changed things up a bit. David Bailey was not around this weekend. Word has it, they are no longer working together. You wonder how that's affecting David Billman. He no longer has that coach telling him to fight. Thank you, Jamie. Had a chance to talk to David Billman early in the day. He said, yeah, they have parted ways. Whether it's amicable or not, don't know. But he just felt like it was time for a change. And so we wish both of them the very best. Meanwhile, back to racing action. David Billman currently sitting in fifth place. There you see his last lap time, 52.4. You, you rate that with what Chad Reed just turned in at 49.9. But Wyndham has turned into 49.1, but he is starting to slide back, now back almost eight seconds. So Chad Reed has done something, he has turned it up, and the Aussie sensation is out in front and absolutely flying. Chad Reed, your leader in the 250 main from St. Louis, Missouri. We'll find out if Kevin Wyndham has anything left for him in the last six laps. Come back to St. Louis right after this short break. Missouri in the Edward Jones Dome. Your leader continues to be Chad Reed here in the 250 main event with just about four laps to go. And Cameron, I don't know what it was. Maybe he got some Vegemite or something because halfway through this race, it looked like Kevin Windham was closing on him. And then all of a sudden, he just gapped him. And now it's up to eight seconds. Now 13 seconds. 
Well, Chad Reed, ever the master of Supercross, everybody talks about the likeness to Jeremy McGrath in his style, and he knows how to put the Supercross together, not getting the triple, triple, triple run through there. Actually, uh, riding right now behind Sean Hamblin, who's riding in 11th place. So Chad Reed has lapped up quite a bit and talked about possible soreness and injury. And I think Chad just has this sport dialed in. No question about it. I think he's sore, but he continues to battle as we leave our leader and go back to that burn and short as we go back to them right now. This is the battle in sixth place. Michael Byrne currently sits in sixth. Andrew Short, number 32, sits in seventh. And Andrew Short riding for the Team MotoWorld.com team. And, you know, he rode on the West Coast, but we did see him on the East Coast as he makes the pass or at least gets the wheel up on Byrne. We'll see if Michael Byrne has anything to answer for him. Ooh, Burn has the inside line here, sweeps to the outside, and now maybe Andrew wow. goes inside, takes him a little bit high, and gets on by. So Andrew Short, number 32 on board the Suzuki, gets past number 26, Michael Burn is Kawasaki. Burn has had some great battles tonight. Unfortunately, he's done the shit into the stick, but Andrew Short with some great moves right now. Michael Burn can't cry over the spilled milk because right behind him is Heath Boss and Nick Way closing in quick. What I was saying about Andrew Short is we saw him in Europe, on the 250, he looked great, and everybody talks about how much potential he has as a 250 rider, and he continues to prove it every time he gets on the big bike. Now look in there, Byrne is not totally given up, but he's got his rearview mirror full of Heath Voss, which could be a problem. You gotta ask yourself, is there maybe a conditioning issue with Michael Byrne, because he always looks so fast and so technical. Is he making mistakes, or is he just running out of steam? Heath Voss at eight, his last lap time at 53-3, and he is closing in for good reason because he's trying to make up points for the World Supercross GP, whose current leader right now is Damon Huffman. Folks, if I haven't told you before, I'll tell you again, make sure you get your tickets for the upcoming races, especially Las Vegas, because it is going to be a great show once we get to the desert. But your leader continues to be Chad Reed as we come down to the final laps of this race. Reed out in front, Wyndham in second, and he's about 13 seconds behind. And Mike LaRocco now sits in fourth place. Just to give you a bit of recap, what can you say about Chad Reed? We talked too much about his injuries, too much maybe about his soreness. This is what he gets paid to do, and he's coming out, and he's doing it tonight with the white flag. It's like the beginning of the season when he wasn't riding. He had the pins in the shoulder, everybody's speculating. And you know what? When you're the guy that's leading the championship, you're winning all the races, you get a little bit of a, a problem. People are going to call it and say, hey, you know, he's got a problem. Can he ride through it? Let's quickly check in with Jamie. Hey, Todd, if you remember back to last year, St. Louis is where Chad Reed started his six-win race streak. I should say six-race win streak. And he went on to beat Ricky Carmichael every race through Vegas. you got to wonder if he's got his mind set on that championship, and he's looking down the road. Well, the gateway to the West has certainly been good for Chad Reed. Reed tonight picking up yet another victory. Let's Grant Langston go through. And Chad Reed, your winner in the 250 main soreness and all. One of the toughest Australians, one of the toughest riders you will find anywhere. He'll be the first guy not to complain about any injury, Cameron. While everyone else was looking for excuses, Chad Reed just went out and looked for the checkered flag. Polished and smooth at the hardest sport in the world. Just so technical. And Mike LaRocco coming around for the finish. He's got to be sore. Ramsey goes through. He picked up the Butterfinger hole shot. Here's Mike LaRocco, folks. He won't get on the podium, but 201 main event starts. Give a lot of credit to Mike LaRocco. What a great night we've had tonight here in St. Louis. We'll step aside, take care of a few business matters. When we come back, we'll talk to our winner, Chad Reed, as well as the rest of the podium. Stay with us. We're back after this. Hot door uh, deal right now, getting ready for that, getting ready for the return of Ricky. And uh, But I still want to finish up the Supercross season strong, and, and tonight just definitely wasn't a strong performance for me. I'm very disappointed. So a very disappointed Kevin Wyndham, but he'll be in Las Vegas, folks. Get your tickets. Join us there because it is the official destination of Supercross as we take a look at our standings right now in the 250 class. It is Chad Reed out in front, Kevin Wyndham in second, but so far, as he said, he has not had the answer. As we flip over the World Supercross GP points, Damon Huffman maintains his lead out in front. Despite that sore ankle, he has maintained the top spot. Let's send it back down to Jamie Little, who is with Chad Reed. Hey, he's number 22, and get this, he's going to be 22 on Monday. So happy birthday to the winner. And Chad, 
You know, we're, we're starting to think in the media, you're messing with us a little bit. I know you got some injuries, but you're coming out here, you skip a practice here and there. What's going on? You ride like you do every week. You know, all the counts on the weekend, it's 20, 20 hard laps, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, took it each day at a time, and, you know, I really rested this week, and, and I felt good about it, and yesterday I beat myself up again, so I was real, uh, real bummed out and just kind of set out the last practice and uh, just was being careful, you know. Uh, it's a good thing about having Jeff Spencer on the team, you know, just making good choices all the time and, and putting 20 good laps together, and that's all that matters. You know, I want to thank all the guys at Yamaha and guys at Thorp Hudson and Bridgestone. You know, they did a great job, and I'm happy to, uh, to do it, you know, you're not even feeling great. Our next show comes to you on Saturday, March 27th. Remember, that's a one-week delay from Indianapolis. Tonight's winner, Chad Reed. On behalf of Cameron Steele and Jamie Little, I'm Todd Harris saying good night from St. Louis.